In this video, I'm gonna be going over Linux in businesses and how Linux is used in businesses. So I've been in the Linux community for several months now and one thing I've kind of noticed is most people don't really understand that are in the community how Linux is used in businesses. And I actually looked up a couple of YouTube videos and some online guides and there's really just not much information about this and it's kind of surprising to me. So having been in business for, you know, since pretty much the early 2000s and have worked in a whole vast array of data centers and environments, um, I need to go over this because I think it's information that would just be good for everyone to have. So having said that, let's jump into the five reasons that, you know, Linux is super prevalent in the data center or business space. So number one is gonna be virtualization. Now this is kind of a surprising one. I kind of did an oddball pick for number one, but it is something that's just coming out. Uh, a piece of virtualization software called Zen Server, made by Citrix, has made it into the server community and kind of made a big splash. They did it in by using an open source project and that's what Zen Server is. It's open source or at least somewhat open source now. I think they've started erecting paywalls within it and someone has forked the project since. But I digress. Uh, for this video, we're just gonna say Zen Server's open source or we're going to call it XCPNG, and I'll leave some links for some videos I've made about that. But uh, let's continue on. Uh, basically, Zen Server allows businesses to stand up entire racks of hosts, which is what runs all the virtualized stuff in a data center. And those hosts usually would have VMware. That's usually the most prevalent uh, virtualization host out there and it uses something called ESXi and that is based on FreeBSD and uh, VMware charges a lot for that license to use it so a very important to know it is extremely extremely expensive so let's say you had 20 hosts you needed to spin up and put VMware on you know you're looking at about a half a million dollars maybe even up to uh, you may might be able to get down to like a quarter of a million depending on licensing deals and partnerships it just depends on the business but that's a heck of a lot of money now having said that is there alternatives this the first alternative is going to be hyper v from windows because many businesses have volume licensing agreements in these volume licensing agreements you usually buy a, just a crap ton of server licenses more than you need in most instances and you can use those to install hyper-v and do virtualization in windows server however i don't particularly like that as stability and reliability are my main concerns as a system admin so uh zen server is now a pretty uh flushed out and stable uh, virtualization host so i really like zen server from citrix um and you know when i price is an issue and i need to use advanced features that are locked behind a paywall there is a project called xcpng which i just mentioned a little while ago but uh i'm just wanted to kind of lay that out there for virtualization in linux and that is my number one pick for how it is utilized in businesses because it literally can save just a ton of money when you don't have extra licenses for Windows Server or you can't afford a VMware setup. Number two is gonna be web hosting. Now this really should have been the number one spot because this is how Linux really got its start. Because of how stable and reliable it was, most people started setting up Apache or Lite HTTP on many, many uh, Linux boxes because most people don't want their website to go down because of a reboot or a memory leak or any of that. So everyone learned how to install LAMP stacks on Linux boxes and put websites on them and usually a lot of websites. Because of the flexibility behind like Apache, you could assign 20, 100, 1,000 different uh, websites all on one simple server instance. Now, obviously, you don't want to install that many, but it is still pretty darn awesome. 
and very, very powerful, especially considered to the just complete headache that IAS is in Microsoft Windows Server. So as a systems admin, Linux was a no-brainer and that's really how I got my start in Linux was because I needed to host a website and I needed to do it on the cheap and I needed it to be stable and reliable and Linux was all those things. So, uh, you know, about a little better part of a decade ago, that's really how I got going on it. And uh, a LAMP stack is Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP. That's what, when I say LAMP stack, that's what all those are. And all those components together, pretty much any website can run off of those four components. And that's just kind of uh, the basis of web hosting. Almost every single web host on the internet, I would say well over 90% are hosted on Linux. Number three is telephony. So this is kind of a surprising one for many people, but uh, most telephony products are actually based in Linux. The biggest dog in the room is something called Asterix, and it is an open source freeware product or, or free software, I should say. And it basically makes it to where you can have a Linux box, you put Asterix on it, and then you can do telephone calls using something called a SIP trunk. I could probably go on here, but your eyes are probably glazing over at this point. Just know that you could hook a phone up to this Linux box and make calls and set up intercoms and just do these really elaborate systems. So instead of spending 20 or $30,000 on a phone system or an intercom system, you could do just a simple one Linux box, um, hook your you know SIP phones up to it and away you go you could have an entire intercom system for probably less than a thousand dollars which is pretty amazing and you could even buy a trunk to come into that and have your entire auto attendant all that just laid out in it and you know again not out any money which is pretty amazing that is just the power of open software and why linux has kind of taken over that space the number four is going to be networking and this one's kind of a hard one for me because most places are cisco shops and that can uh that's kind of a proprietary thing it's not really based on linux per se but there are a lot of uh, routers and gateways out there that are based on linux so it's very important to know that uh, networking is kind of taking off and I kind of see the gradual pull away from Cisco a little bit, at least my hope is, because <laughs> I'm not a big Cisco guy, but uh, you can't beat the reliability when it comes to networking and uh, they're fantastic. So I, I really, I can't really say that much about bad about Cisco because once um, you get somebody that's like CCNA certified in there and, and knows what they're doing, it is a uh, great networking equipment once it's set up, but uh, the rest of everything else, most gateways, most residential routers, all that is based on Linux and you can SSH into them and change them around and sometimes do some fantastic things with them. Now there's things called like OpenSense or PFSense and these are kind of do it yourself home uh, routers that you can create your, yourself so you don't have to go out and buy a Linksys or a Netgear. And I actually have bought in some uh, proprietary electronics that I had built in China. It's taken about three months to get and I finally got them in. So I'm gonna actually be building my own custom router using like PFSense and uh, a nice little form factor and this board, it's all gonna be pretty cool hopefully or it just wasted a couple hundred dollars i really hope i didn't but i think it's gonna be fantastic but uh in the end number four is networking and businesses got a little sidetracked sometimes that happens but uh it is the future and the present day reality of networking is a lot of it is based on linux number five is going to be file sharing so this one's kind of a difficult one for me to actually mention because it's like file sharing with an asterisk because if you are file sharing through Linux and this is mainly for small, maybe even some medium sized businesses that use a Linux file share, typically it's like a NAS box that is connected to your existing active directory and the active directory is almost always windows you know almost everybody has a domain controller that runs a windows server and then you connect these boxes up to them and they're running linux and then you go ahead and 
do that. I think that's going to change hopefully in the next five years because I really enjoy like FreeNAS and it uses uh, ZFS and it is a fantastic, fantastic product. I have that in my garage. I have just this old beat up hunk, clunk of junk that uh, I talk, tacked on some hard drives to and it is just just keeps going and going. So uh, just a fantastic product. But for big businesses, they don't use that. They actually use an Oracle appliance that has ZFX built in and baked in and it is phenomenal. But I, I think those are rather expensive, anywhere between 20 and 100K starting out. So, uh, you know, not very practicable for small and medium sized businesses. So you still see a lot of like Linux NAS boxes and stuff floating around for file sharing in uh, that business realm. So that is my five things for business and I'm going to kind of have a recurring segment here of Linux for business and just kind of show people how you would take or start to transition some of your existing tech out of the old school Windows servers and start making it more operating system agnostic. I think this will really help with adoption coming up and also you know you shouldn't be reliant on Windows or Windows server. Um, and there's some just best practices that you probably need to follow, not necessarily a full conversion. Like I'm not going to recommend for a big business of 20 to 100 employees to switch all their users to Linux, even though in my mind that'd be awesome. In reality, you got to remember all these people have to learn this operating system and have to learn all the new pieces of software such as LibreOffice and how to get around and work in Linux. And to do all that all at once is just a bit much. So this is mainly the backbones when I'm talking about Linux for business. It's really just important to know that because a lot of people don't realize how much Linux is in the business community. And I just kind of want to touch on these five broad broad topics that uh, just kind of give you a glimpse into how Linux is used in businesses. So that's going to do it for today, guys. But if you like this video, consider going over to Patreon and becoming a patron. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. It would help build the community and help me make more videos like this one. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.